morning guys still kind of uh, still kind of dark this morning it's really early it's about uh, seven o'clock gonna head outside here good morning Wolfie and talk about today's uh, festivities Wolfie there he is make sure you're alive <laughs> oh it'll be another uh, sunny warm day today 70 75 degrees day after day Oh, get an early jump today. I like that. So what we're going to do today, our plan of attack for the uh, shine shack, and you can see that's almost basically dried, that uh, first coating up there. And the thing I like about when you do the seaming, it looks like it has a ridge in the middle, but that ridge goes up inside between the boards, which means the uh, second coat of drywall mud just uh, fills in that ridge real nice makes it very very strong that's the other function of the uh, the uh, mud the drywall compound is to uh, strengthen the uh, boards and give them give them rigidity at the uh, seams so what I'd like to do today rather than just lay initially lay one long piece in here I would like to uh, close these uh, side seams first all the way along and then uh, go lay the uh, two two seams, the two angular seams, and uh, they're going to be a little uh, a little bit tricky because the uh, the one angle looks like about a hundred and hundred forty degrees up here, and this one looks like it's about a hundred ten degrees this angle here. So it's going to be a little a uh, little complicated because we don't have any hundred ten degree trowels uh, that have that shape for pushing down. But we'll uh, we'll get her done. So that's, uh, that's the first thing we're going to do. And then we get all that uh, first coated and uh, she'll start drying good and then we will hit the walls. All right, going to be a busy day. And you really rarely ever see when people are doing drywall is really a, a mastic application trowel. And I find it it's excellent. I don't use the notch side, but the uh, thin, the uh, non-notch side is so thin and flexible. So when I go and put on the... Uh, do the seam I lay on the fiberglass tape first and then I make sure to mud it up real good with a regular uh, putty knife a wide blade four inch putty knife but then I come back at the end and get that really as smooth as possible with the uh, with the trowel here and it really does a good job because the, the smoother you can make it on application the easier it's going to be to uh, second coat it. You're not going to have a lot of ridges, high and low spots. So it's very easy to quickly sand it down and apply the next coat. Are going to do the nice, strong, and non distressed sales. You make that kind of distinction. Is that really based on if they're underwater or not on their interest rates? Absolutely. Uh, I have a, a situation that uh, I know of where a you know, lady's uh, husband had passed away and she was in a situation where she has to sell her home as a distressed sale. That home is going to sell for less, especially if people are aware that it is a short sale and obviously we require now to place that on the listing if it indicates that it is underwater. The problem with those is it, it lowers the value of the property. So once we can move the great amount of short sales... Work at it real so good, good here. We're going to see uh, uh, non-distressed sales in the value now of the Now we're going to come back and finish with the uh, load the trowel up here. She has a mortgage worth more than the value of the home. How does that impact me as a buyer? Well, it used to impact the buyer about uh, considerable. No debt trail is good. So because it takes a long time to go through the process of negotiating with the bank to take less money than they're owed. Uh, recently, the banks have streamlined the process a bit more, but it still takes longer uh, to do a short sale or an REO. Three or four or five months? Is that uh, it is less than that. Okay. I would say anywhere from, you know, two months, 60 days to uh, 120 days. Well, you can see it really went down uh, easy here. The, uh, I got the longest, uh, one of the longest strips laid in on the uh, top angle there. And the thing is, just get it down. Don't let yourself have any bubbles and stuff. Just uh, apply it as you go along with your, let it roll out in front of you, the tape. 
and apply that and just try to get that as smooth as possible with the uh, lay down a good bed of uh, drywall mud and then uh, once you lay it in there pop your tape in there and press it down good and that'll get it to adhere real good you don't just slop a lot of drywall uh, mud on top of that you want to have a very thin coating because you want to minimize your sanding because uh, that's the real bad part of working with uh, finishing drywall is finishing that uh, drywall with the sanding so if you can minimize the uh, work that you have to do by thin applications so much the better so that's our first uh, top angle we're gonna now we got the longest one we got a long one up here to run in so let's get to it the number two uh, number two joint taped up there that's a real long one and uh, nice I used up an old roll of uh, tape I had so these two uh, these two uh, long seams here were uh, paper taped and now we're going to use the uh, real fancy uh, you know the ultra flex here to do this uh, long joint up here because it's one I want to have a lot of strength going into that uh, wall joint there and uh, you can see the beauty of uh, laying uh, getting all that uh, sheetrock flushes we have a really good line going down the side and any unevenness or puckers and things will be filled when we go back and uh, and uh, put the uh, put the second coat on that it's uh, it's gonna be awesome and it's time for a coffee break now <sighs> okay well I got the uh, the long stretch of flex up for the uh, where the walls meet the uh, vaulted ceiling there and this stuff is fantastic I just basically butter the wall with the uh, with the uh, drywall mud you can see the flaps that this product has on it nice and wide here plenty of surface is thick and it's, it's really a rigid product so it lays in there really good and you can see how clean and how perfect that's just a uh, perfect line it did not matter if there was slight unevenness here or there just laying that in allowed for a uh, just a laser level great line there so I'm very pleased so the uh, ceiling is really rolling along good <laughs> and uh, of course the walls are a lot easier so we've got uh, two laid in on that side over here and now it remains to do this this is a shorter run over here and I like to pre-cut the piece to the approximate length uh, this box is well designed but for 50 bucks it should be the uh, material just rolls right out it's nice too it has the foot markers every foot so uh, I really like it way to go uh, ultra flex 325 great product and I've always loved using it expensive as the devil from slam technology but a okay side up yeah okay the second uh, the uh, second big corner is in the 120 degree corner so we got all the uh, ceiling and all the corners done we're gonna get go back and get some of the minor ones but uh, we want to finish up all the uh, high ladder work so I'm gonna go back now and catch some of these uh, 
these drywall screw depressions and fill them with a little bit of uh, mud. I think I'll take this a little tighter too, maybe around the uh, fan box up here. Get some tape on there and start building that up a little bit. So yeah, it's looking good. I'm really uh, happy. It's about 10:30 uh, a.m. We've been out here for about uh, three hours and making really good progress. Because when it comes time to get to these walls, we're just going to blow down these walls like nothing. It's going to be easy with the uh, with the tape. Okay. I wall crap all over me, but all of the ceiling has been joined to the walls now in all the locations. It really went uh, went down smooth, went down well. It really paid off. I've said it a couple times here for a week or so. Making sure that all the uh, joints, all the sheetrock is really flush with the piece next to it, just ensured that there weren't any uh, awkward uh, seams to be uh, done and uh, no weird drywall uh, joints to be floated so we're going to have a lot of strength in here going to have a lot of uh, uh, thermal uh, insulation and it's going to be uh, awesome so i'm going to go ahead now and uh, start getting the uh, corner joints in actually i'll probably go back and catch these uh, small pieces on the top put some uh, put some of the fiberglass tape on there and get them taped. So I am rolling along. It's noon, right on schedule. And that's even if you live in the same, don't work in our same sex stuff. So they're going to get bitten by that marriage penalty we talked about before. And that uh, for a single individual, you, you, you can make up to $400,000 before you hit 39.6. But for a marriage filing jointly, it's four fifty. So if you have two people and you put marriage on together, so what you just told us in one sentence, Bill, is don't do your taxes yourself with <laughs> <laughs> Hey, not exactly, but I will say it's an important year. And even if you use that term of tax to do it yourself, it's an important year to make sure you get all the deductions you're entitled to. Hey, Bill, 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 Bill. Bill, we are up against the clock here. I want to get, we do have a, somewhat of an extension this year. I want to get into that as well. We are up against the clock though. Can I, can I hold you through the break here? Absolutely not. All right, Bill Dandy joining us. He's a fast expert. Kate, you have a place to turn for traffic on the fives. And Jen Perea. You'll be, sometimes you'll be doing uh, finishing sheet rock. And you'll see you have a uh, small, you know, this was a sectional piece up here, this small little area. It was actually in two pieces, one piece here and one here. And you may be tempted to just run your drywall mud right into that crack and uh, figure that'll hold real good. But I guarantee you, you do that, and this is exactly the kind of place that a crack will develop. So no matter how short it is, you still have to uh, perpendicularly throw a piece of tape in there and mud that, and that'll definitely make sure that no crack ever, ever develops. And really good things that this, uh, one of the really good things that this uh, corner and this ultra flex slam really helps when it comes time to putting in corners. You can see how rigid it is. I just pretty cut the length I need to have already mudded the corner all the way through, all the way up and down. I just slide that in, hit it on the up part there, and hit both sides down. You can see how fast and really effective that is. And I can't tell you how powerful that corner is. You can screw around with the paper tape and it slides in and out here. This is rigid and just parks itself right in the corner. It is fantastic. And I love it. And, uh, like I said, it costs a hell of a lot of money. You know, 50 cents of running foot is not uh, cheap. But when you think the time, it uh, saves. And I'll get you in here to uh, see how clean that looks. You can take a look right in there. You can see how. Uh, how wonderful clean, how wonderfully clean that uh, corner is there. And that takes about uh, five minutes to do a corner. It is fantastic. All the, uh, all the corners are now in. That Slam Ultra Flex is just off the hook. It is so good. 
Got it in. Now it's time to uh, shoot the uh, open seams. We got a corner here. I may have a piece of the uh, spring steel corner. I got to go root in hell out there in the uh, garage. I think I'll go over and take a little peek. It's a friggin' nightmare getting into this place right now. The boss would have my ass right if he saw this. I think I had a. Uh, oh, I think I had a. Somewhere I had a container with a lot of that uh, stuff. I don't know where in the heck it went. I had a lot left over from doing the uh, house, but uh, ooh, who in the hell knows? I don't see it anymore. Just have to look around here a little more. I don't think I could. Oh, there it is up there. You can see some of the uh, steel. Yeah, so I do have uh, some. I don't. Doesn't look like I have. Might have one corner, maybe a little bit of corner. I have to get the ladder and uh, take a look. So yeah. All right, but the uh, the uh, corners are in, and now it's time to just hit those uh, hit, hit those simple seams, and that'll be it for all the. Uh, all the taping will be over and then we'll be getting on to the uh, finishing. About one o'clock, rolling good. It's three o'clock guys and guess what? All of the uh, taping is done and I am really, really cooked. A lot of work. We got started about uh, 7.30. So I don't know, it was about uh, eight hours or so. <clears throat> yeah, seven, eight hours. So it's looking good. Got uh, all the uh, taping done. And that's a big part of, uh, you know, what makes uh, sheetrock work such a drag is doing that. Some things still have to be done. I have to put the uh, corner on here. I haven't had the energy to go into the garage and grab that from the upper deck. And the windows have to be finished out here. Got some side paneling put in here and then finish out with an ultra modern type of trim that I will uh, probably show you tomorrow. So uh, probably gonna clean up. The place is a wreck right now and it's it, it gets kind of dangerous when there's so much stuff laying around the trip on when you're moving ladders around so I want to really take some time and uh, get her cleaned up now but another very productive day <laughs> I got the drywall on me but uh, I'm very happy very pleased nothing uh, nothing of note no major problems at all so uh, really pleased all right thanks for being along today